All right, hello everybody. Today I'm going to show you how to raw pack a pork roast. Uh, today's pork roast is from Sam's Club, and it's a Boston bone-in, bone-in Boston pork roast, whatever that is. And I chose it because it was the cheapest meat there. Um, I've already processed one of them and took about that much fat off of it. I'm going to save this flap of fat and put it in the stock pot. And then with these bones, I'll make um, black bean and pork soup. That's a later video, though, so you have to watch later. So I'll just show you how to do one jar, and then I'll do the rest and show you from there. So basically, you're going to need meat, a jar, this kind of salt, and a canner. You don't need water to add water for raw pack. You don't need to do anything. So I'll just show you if I can with my clean hand. That's a quarter teaspoon of um, pickling or canning salt. Then you're just going to take your other knife, big knife, take your meat, and you're going to cube it up. It doesn't have to be exactly the same size. In fact, I'm not even certain it has to be a certain size. I've never really paid attention to that. I just find that if you chop them smaller, it's easier to find all the spaces in the jar to get it completely filled. So that's probably enough. This is six pounds, trimmed off a good amount of fat, so I should get maybe eight jars. Just take it like that, and uh, you just fill your jar. Well, let me show you what I mean by fill the jar. Okay. There's a lot of people on the interwebs that read the book and then never actually done it, and then they lecture people who have <laughs> been pressure canning for years and tell them that they're going to die and this and that. Let me tell you, in my opinion, pressure canning is way easier and way safer than water bath canning. Because if you do it right and you put it in for the right amount of time, it's going to kill everything. You're not depending on acidity or any of that stuff. It's just, I mean, almost sterilizing it. So we got all this meat here. I'm going to press it down. One time I used a metal spoon to press this down. Some dude had a seizure about it, telling me how I'm going to destroy the world with the <laughs> So, so. All right. Now, a long time ago, I learned how to can, and the lady that taught me said it all depends on your personal ink factor. So see right there, there's a little void. Some people might say that's the end of the world. I just press it in really tight. Okay, and most of the voids are gone. With raw pack, you don't want to add any water because the meat's going to cook in the jar as it goes and produce its own water that will fill in those voids so you don't freak out. That is about one inch of headspace. And there you go, it's that easy. Now you just repeat until you're out of meat, and I'll show you the next step. Alright, well I got all my eight jars filled with meat. Now, the next part is to take a clean rag. Some people use vinegar, I'm just using water. And you want to clean the rim of the jar. The rim is here. Some people will do the threads, I just do the rim. Kind of like that. Do that for every single jar. The reason you do that is so that that brown part can get a good seal there. That's called the lid. This is called the ring. Then you put the ring on, finger tight, just like that. And I'm going to do that eight more times. No, I don't warm these up. That's from the olden days when you had to soften the seals. You don't have to do that anymore. No, I don't sterilize these. Why? Because they're going into a pressure canner. Everything living on this will all be dead. If you can for the right amount of pressure and time. All right, so now I'll show you the next one. All right, it's shaky camera time. So the next thing you're going to do is put your jars in the canner with the appropriate amount of water for your canner. For that, you're going to want to, if you have hard water, a little splash of vinegar will keep the keep it from clouding up the outside of the jars. It's perfectly harmless. Then you want to look at your lid. Seal should be good. 
and you should be able to see ooh, shaky daylight. That's the vent. You want there to be daylight there. Okay, I put the cold product into cold water. If this were warm, like the soup that's going to be on another video, you'd put it in warm water because you don't want to shatter the glass. So whatever temperature the stuff you're putting in is the temperature you want to start your water at. Now the next step, heating it up, letting it vent. Well, I know I seem kind of casual with my canning earlier, but there's a few things that you make sure you have to do, and this is one of them. You have to let that vent like that for 10 minutes, otherwise the world will end. I don't really know what'll happen. I think the jars blow up or something, but just do that for 10 minutes. Once my little thing pops up, 10 minutes. Okay, we've been doing this for 10 minutes. Now we're gonna put our little weight on that thing. That weight will begin to jiggle at 15 pounds, and we're gonna set our time, which is 75 minutes, after that thing starts jiggling consistently. If it stops jiggling, you have to start the time over. All right, now it's, the time is up. Now all you do is turn off the heat and let the pressure gauge go down to zero and that thing go down and then we can take the jars out. All right, hello everybody. <clears throat> As you can see, it's a couple days later. I uh, put it down here on the shelf, but I just wanted to show you a couple more things. On the top, I put the month and the year. Um, just let them get fully cool after the canner. Don't touch them. One thing I do also with meat <clears throat> is after they're fully cool and all that's done with, then I uh, wash the jars with soap and water. That way it doesn't attract the dogs or rodents or whatever. So it's still a little bit, maybe, but it's pretty clean. So it just goes on the shelf with the rest of the meat. And as you can see, we have a, a lot of work to do. Anyways, thanks for watching.